beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed and stay blessed Hallelujah. Let's hold our hands together and just pray for one minute in the spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One word from the Lord can set our lives on fire. One word is able to bring restoration. One word able to take us to new dimensions in the spirit. Abrande galakato sabradisia. Ke pros kabarunda shala bracatis. Sada balada kata brasile bash. Sete bakura sada balanda kotas. Shanda lakatos ebrende gedukos. Are you praying? The entrance of your word gives life and understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. One of the ways that the word is made manifest is through preaching. Titus chapter 1 and verse 3. Titus chapter 1 verse 3. It says, But had in due times manifested his word through preaching. The word can be made manifest when it is preached. The communication of God's word is one of the ways that the word is made manifest. I'd like you to pray in one minute. Lord, may your word be made manifest in my life. May your word be made manifest. Is someone praying? Manifest through preaching. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to have us back again. May the Lord bless you. Just greet someone by your left and right and please be seated. We have a lot to do tonight. Tell them it's good to see you again. 
tell them I'm glad the word of God is working for you. I can see the evidence around you. The word is producing results. Hallelujah. It's my joy again to bring the word of God. And um, I rejoice at our passion for the word of God. Listen, the word of God is more important than the man of God. Never forget this. Are we together now? The only thing that makes a man of God worth celebrating is the message he carries and the grace that backs that message. The message is more important than the messenger. Whenever the messenger becomes more important than the message, it will not profit people again. Are we together? I am a man, a human being, but this word is supernatural and powerful. Are we together? The only thing that gives value to me is the ability to be, by the privilege of God's grace, a custodian of these mysteries. So you, you must have, place value on the word of God. Respect and honor the messengers, the vessels, but not above the word. Because he honors even this word above his name. And any wise man must train people to honor the word above his name. As powerful as the testimonies are, apostles said this. Um, of course, I know that the people are communicating um, their belief, but the real agency that makes results is the word of God. Are we together now? So it's, it's, it, it matters that we drum this into our spirits. The only value that the vessel has is in its connection with the word and the grace that backs that word. Take away the message and there is no ministry. Ministry is not about a man. Ministry is not about activities. Ministry is about the communication of a message that contained in that message, there is an ability to first translate people to conform to the image of God and then give them spiritual understanding and then at the same time empower them to become epistles of that which has been communicated. That's the assignment of the word. Are we together now? Yes, I trust that God is blessing us. It is important that we understand the value of the message. The message. The message. John said, I am the voice of one crying. My name is not as important as what I am saying. That's what he was saying. That's why God, Jesus, manifested in the flesh, called himself the Word. The Word. The living Logos. In the beginning, before there was the mention of the name of any man, the word. In the beginning, the word. In the beginning, the word. Are we together now? So it's important that we place value on the word. Not just the word like scriptures. That one is religion. But there is a message. Listen carefully. There is a message. If I send you a letter and I put a parcel in an envelope and send it, the letter is more important than the envelope. But if you ignore the envelope, you may never live to receive the letter. Are we together now? The purpose of receiving the envelope is to give you access to the letter that is within. And that letter is a letter written to you. It is a message to you. Are we together now? Yes. The word of God does not operate generically. It must be received individually. Are we together now? Hmm. Send your word, O oh God. Every man remains helpless until the word of God comes to you. Listen. Until the word, the appearance of the word of God is how hope comes. God sends you hope by bringing a message. Lord, do something about my life. Here comes his word. His word is very powerful. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Yeah, let hope, 
let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Sing this song with understanding. It's not a special number. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Yeah, one more time. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. That's how God saves men. Listen, that's how God leads men. There was only one anointing service in the Bible, in the ministry of Jesus. When he was about to go to heaven, receive the Holy Ghost. Every other thing was a word exposition service. Three and a half years under an intense teaching anointing and they became apostles it was not impartation that made them apostles it was the quality of the word so when the word of god comes to you satan fights the word because of what it can do the word of god is powerful the word of god is useless when it is not taught the word of God is useless when it is not received. The word of God is useless when it is not believed. You can carry a bomb and play with it for as long as it has not been programmed to explode. You can even kick it and play football. But let someone by mistake activate the potential in that bomb. One tiny object can totally wipe out a nation. That's what the word can do. So if the word of God looks important, there may be many suggestions as to why it is so. Number one, maybe the word of God has not come to you. Scripture may have come. Memory verses may have come, but the word of God has not come. Scripture is not the word of God. Memory verses is not the word of God. Recitations. No, the scribes and the Pharisees had this. So when Jesus came, he said, ye are not knowing the scripture. He said, you search the scripture, for in them you think you will find life, and then you will not come to me. Hallelujah. Every time we are gathered, we are gathered to grow and to rise, and that by the ministry of the word. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, nobody will invent a new system of transformation. The saints are transformed by the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. The ministry of the word gives them understanding. The ministry of the spirit gives empowerment. It is this twofold dimension of spiritual operations that empower men. It is empowering men is not a mystery. You can know that men can be empowered. To the degree to which they sit under an accurate dispensing of truth. Not the opinions of men. Not the wisdom of men. Not just the theological exegesis that comes with Sophia, human wisdom. But the wisdom and the communication of the spirit that is from above. That's what has the ability to change men. So you must hunger for the accurate understanding of the word as it relates to the major areas of our lives you know one of my assignments by the grace of god to the body is to demystify spiritual operations this is one of the reasons why many believers do not receive because we men and women of god sometimes pride ourselves in creating a lot of mysticism around the operation of the word a thing does not have to look mystical to be supernatural are you getting what i'm saying now yeah the most powerful activity that can happen to a man is as simple as simple and accessible to everyone the system that leads men to the new birth experience that in one minute a man can be spiritually translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. 
Yes, it looks so basic, but without that one decision, there are people in hell today. They got PhDs. Many times as complicated as that decision. Or more complicated than the decision, but it didn't take them to heaven. The system of growth will always be the same. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But one thing is needful, and this Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. I don't care what your life is. Just pay the price to sit at the master's feet and let his word come. If you sit and sleep, you will die like the woman that died upstairs when the apostle was teaching. So it's not just to sit down and snore or to sit down and wonder, does this really work? Your attention, your spirit, that hunger, that desire, God, you are about to speak. And when your word comes, understanding is coming. When your word comes, healing is coming. When your word comes, breakthrough is coming. Our lives will remain reflections of what we do not know or what we do not believe or what we have not received or otherwise our lives will always be a reflection the interesting thing about the systems of this world is that your opinion does not matter whether you agree or not whether you argue or not whether you believe or not doesn't make any difference is that true you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So whether you believe that the counsel being communicated is of God or not, whether the religious circle with which you are planted in agrees or not, one thing is for sure. Whether you agree that a plane is in the air right now or not, it doesn't stop the plane from moving. God remains God, whether you believe him or not. His principles remain potent whether we believe or not. Our assignment is to make a choice between the pride and the depravity that comes with the fallen man and a humble and a meek heart that is able to receive and transit. This is your assignment to choose that as your word comes, Lord, I quit argument. My result clearly shows that there is something I do not know. So I submit myself to the wisdom of the rabbi of the ages and give God time and watch what he can do. You know, sometimes it takes literally minutes for God to bring you into that result. It's not always a long time. Hallelujah. Can we pray one more time? Cry to God from the depth of your heart. Help me, oh God. Take away the stony heart. Give me a heart of flesh. Lord, I need real results in my life. Provable. What you are about to learn tonight, you know, for many of you who are sensitive, you will know that this is a very powerful year. Um, when the word of God begins to gain strength and performance in the lives of people, it confirms, number one, that the word is true. But then number two, it also confirms that the people are receiving it. Are we together now? Yes. The word of God that is coming to us tonight is very powerful is is a word of deliverance is a word of enlightenment is a word that will give us insight is a word that will give us stability and is a word that by the grace of god will respond to the issues that buffet the lives of men hallelujah
give the healing and the grace that our hearts hunger for. 17. We'll read verse 1 to 3 and then we'll jump to verse 7. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. We're not dealing with that, but I can stop here to talk all night. The word here is El Shaddai. That's where you get the word El Shaddai. Are we together now? I am the Almighty God. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee. How? Exceedingly. Verse 3. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, go to verse 7. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, their generations, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. One more verse, 8. And I will give unto thee and thy seed after thee the land, wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. I appear to you, and I tell you, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me, and I will make certain things possible in your life, and not just your life, it will affect your children. Remember what Psalm 112 says. It says, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Then it says, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. It says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. The man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commands. I had a discussion yesterday with a dear lady that really provoked, for me, it, it really challenged me to share the things that I'll be sharing. And um, she communicated an observation and she told me, she said, Apostle, I have noticed that many of the brethren from Zaria when they go outside of this environment, they are extremely spiritual. They are men and women of character. I mean, you can look at them and just know that these men came from Zaria. But they are very poor. They are very mediocre. And they never are able to do anything well. When it comes to do with other matters outside spirituality, they are very, very inefficient. It was an observation. And that really got to me. I felt very responsible over that statement. And I said, why would this be so? Would it be a good news to know that someone came out from among us or from around this city where we are domiciled and that we do not see a manifestation of the whole counsel of God in the life of that person? Especially with the times that we live, I really got concerned because she observed that many of these brethren, many of them had fellowships. Is that correct? They had groups, whether church youth groups or some of them even had churches. So when it has to do with apportioning things spiritually, they usually are the center of attraction. In fact, to the point that when people just say, I, I, I am from Zaria, whether a student, whether one, even if you are an arm robber, you just say from Zaria, I mean, you are worthy of reception. But then the quality of their lives, the lives of their children, their families, some of them are maybe the first in their families to really take God seriously. And yet, the, 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 the evidences that should create conviction are not there. I was touched. I really was touched. I said, God, this cannot be your will. And I said, what could be wrong? The obvious answer is the men of God that have had the opportunity to communicate the truths of the word 
within this territory over time. That is the obvious explanation. It means that there has been something about the lopsidedness of our spiritual communication because men reflect the voices that they heard. Is that true? So that means that somewhere in our spiritual communication, either through honest ignorance or through the trivializing of certain dimensions of the kingdom experience, the saints were not properly equipped to both be spiritual and to be responsible. Maybe I would put it this way, that we focused on the issues that matter to godliness, but we forgot the issues that matter to life. Yet the Bible says his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto both life and godliness. It will be wickedness to rejoice at a Christian who cannot pay his child's school fees. This is more than finance. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will be wicked for a Christian who malhandles his wife, although he's a tongue-talking prayer warrior who belongs to a church, but because he was not equipped to know that your family life and the quality of it is also a measure of your knowing God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen, as I grow in leadership and the privilege of influence over people, I am learning that any side of the, the kingdom life you neglect, you will see a multitude of people reflect that lopsidedness. The church in Nigeria, the church in Africa is largely responsible for the, the quality of the lives of people in Africa because Africa is a very religious continent. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Saturday, there are vigils, there are fasting programs. There are more committed people in the church in Africa than any other part in the world. Our level of spiritual committal is worth um, commending. Yet, we are obvious reflections of the lopsidedness that has come largely from the pulpit this is an uncomfortable truth but any and every man of god that truly fears god must take this as a responsibility that the reason why something may be going wrong it may be that i have not been able to communicate this dimension of god so the members believe but they believe an error so they become that error because whatever you believe you become I got very challenged. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been able to excel and do the things that God has granted us grace to do because by the privilege of God's grace, he has allowed us to capture in our lives all the areas and the dimensions that are required for efficiency, from administration to leadership to the pastoral work to a system of mentorship and continuity. Are we together now? To security, to finance, and all of that. So the results that we celebrate by the grace of God is not just an issue of the will of God. It is the product of systems that were believed and received and engaged. This is the result. And where we will go from here will also be a reflection of the things we have learned and are learning or the things we are ignoring. It, is, it will be my greatest pain as a man of God to see that a few years from now, when you rise, that you will be walking through life and destiny limping and the reason for that limp will be something I did not teach you, something I trivialized that was important for your life. If I fail as a person and you succeed in receiving the whole counsel of God, your success will turn me into a success again. Are we blessed? Let me say this before I start teaching. You are not qualified to create your curriculum as a student. L listen, listen. Don't, don't just be, be too quick to write. Just try to listen. 
One of the reasons I believe why many people are not efficient, first spiritually and then in other areas of their lives is they sit as students and they write what they believe should be their curriculum. It's wrong. It's pride. Those who are in school, when you come into a class, a level, a lecture hall, you sit quietly and trust the wisdom of the lecturer. Am I correct? The lecturer comes in and whether he looks like what you expected or not, you trust the fact that if that institution could employ him, then there was a system of vetting. Nobody was just brought on the street. Paul, a man, approved of God. He, did, he was not just recruited by will. There was a system of vetting and accreditation. Are we together now? And then the lecturer now tells you, these are the topics or the courses we are going to cover. Write. And usually you will find a lot of arrogant students who will not write and say, no, no, no. That thing is not supposed to be there. This person is probably in 100 level or secondary school or wherever. And that man who is talking may be a doctor or a professor. Just because he sounds like you doesn't mean you are at the same level. There is a history that you have no idea of. Even if you don't respect the man, respect the history. Are we together now? And then he begins to teach and mentor you. And to the degree to which you pay attention, it will shock you that you are becoming like him. You get to a point where you so become like him that a group of individuals accredit you and they award you a system of certification that now qualifies you. It doesn't stop you from learning, but it qualifies you to be an authority within the context of what you study. This is how we grow in the spirit. Many believers sit down and choose and say, no, this issue of prayer, we are not supposed to be praying this way. Even me, my spirit, I don't feel it. That person who is talking doesn't know anything about the power of God, nor the grace of God. Does not understand anything about the anointing. Yet he's already writing a book in his mind on prayer. And vetting who should, you know, teach. That person cannot even pray for 20 minutes. And yet he believes he's an authority in prayer. The same thing with the teaching of the word. The same thing with the issue of wealth and abundance and a good life and all of that. The challenge has been that many students in the school of the spirit choose the courses they want to offer and leave the rest. The curriculum has been preset that if you attend all the lectures, it will make you become certain things. Remember our scripture that is almost a memory verse here. That I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. There are many precious pastors, men of God, who will not pay attention to certain dimensions of the kingdom life. And then as their ministries begin to grow, the lapse in that knowledge begins to reflect. Are we together? Yes. I give you an instance. If you are, say for instance, a man of God who does not pay attention to the quality of family life simply because the people who are your congregation at that time are children and students you forget that the father today was the child of yesterday and if you do not teach them by the time they get into their family lives all that will happen in that family is a crusade and a prayer conference because that's exactly what you have taught they can only do what they know is that true That's our generation. I mean, this is, this is the next generation. That's like Samuel <laughs> telling Eli, I hear you. Is God speaking to us? So it's important as believers that we open ourselves to the full counsel of God. I don't know how many of you can walk on one leg indefinitely. If you are playing sports, that's a different thing. But in life and destiny, to walk on one leg continually, you can't do much and the pressure will even hurt you. Is that true? You need to have that balance and stability. 
And this is what, by the grace of God, we seek to provide week in, week out, and that includes tonight. Are you ready to receive now? Lord, I humble myself to receive your word. Can you pray that one prayer? Just pray that simple prayer. I cast my crowns before the highest royalty. I am undone before your royal majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Write it down. The warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Please, I want to beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you tonight. The warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. Please let's read it together. The warfare dimension. Make sure you write the topic. The warfare. I want to introduce you to a very foreign dimension of the blessings of God that many, many believers do not know. And this has been responsible for the limitations in the lives of families, in the lives of individuals you see what is happening in our nation now there is a lot of fear and listen the Lord showed me something I, I hope that in one of the days I will have the opportunity to share I saw something in a vision that made me fear about certain things that was coming on the body of Christ it's not exactly negative but it will have a negative effect. Let's continue. One, two, read. Go up to the mountain, uh-huh, and bring wood. Stop. Stop. The prophet is writing by the Spirit. First instruction, go up to the mountain. Second instruction, bring wood. What is your purpose of going up the mountain? To bring wood. <laughs> Just follow me carefully. I don't know what wood is doing in the mountain. Because at the last time I checked, you don't grow woods on the mountain. The Bible says, go up to the mountain and bring wood. And then use that wood to build the house, not a house. Use the wood you get up the mountain to build the house. And I will take pleasure in that house that was built from the wood that was gotten up the mountain. And then he says, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Go up to the mountain, Koinonia, and bring wood. Use the wood that you bring. To build my house. Are we together? Now, of course, prophetically, he was talking about physical temples. But now you know that the house of God is not a physical structure. You know that? So every time God talks about building his house, he's talking of building his ecclesia. You understand that? Theologically speaking, the house of God today does not mean a building or a church. It does not even just mean systems. It means people. So it takes wood to build people. We all as living stones 
built into a spiritual house. Are we together now tonight? Go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified when my house is built. Listen very carefully. There are, there are many instructions about the building of the Lord's house and one of it he tells us that it takes wood whatever that wood is we know that is something you do not yet have and so it says the location of that wood is up the mountain not to the forest go up the mountain listen carefully and get wood and then with that wood go and build my house matthew chapter 5 quicken our eyes to see in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus was teaching in what we call the Beatitudes he was teaching the principles of the kingdom in fact let's start from 4 Matthew chapter 4 what we know as the temptation of Jesus now, there are three levels of temptation that the devil presented to Jesus. I'm interested in the third one. The first temptation had to do with your individual hunger. Are we together now? Jesus had finished praying and fasting 40 days. And the first person he would meet would be Satan himself. And then Satan tells him, turn this stone to bread. Second temptation, he takes him up the second temptation had to do with his spiritual convictions. Are we together? He took him to a holy city. Satan, holy city. Satan, holy city. Took Jesus up a holy city and set him on a pinnacle and said, Jesus, fall down. Throw yourself to the ground. It is written, he shall put his angels. So it was a temptation that related to his spiritual life. That related to his spiritual conviction. The first was his hunger. His individual life. And then he says no. I have gone past that level. Then the second thing affected his faith. But the third. Was a very strange one. And that's what I want us to look at. Matthew chapter 4. If God is blessing you say amen. amen. Verse 8. We are reading to 11. The third temptation. Read with me. We'll read verse 8 and then I'll continue. One to read. Again, the devil taketh him up into, stop, not towards, into. The devil taketh him. Who is the him? Your Jesus. Taketh him into an exceeding high mountain. And what happened when they got to that mountain? He stood from that mountain and saw the glory of the entire earth. That there is a mountain a man can stand. And from that mountain you can see the glory of the whole earth. This is the mountain that Satan took Jesus. There were many mountains, but he knew only one would be worth tempting Jesus in. And he took Jesus to that mountain. The Bible calls it an exceeding high mountain. And then he showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Next verse. And say it to him, ah, all these things, what things? The kingdoms and the glories I will give thee. So the mountain is a place of exchange. Listen, remember, don't forget our scripture. Well, well, I'm building something here. Go up to the mountain. Something you will do in the mountain will give you wood. Use that wood and come down. Come and build the house of God. And the Bible says God will be glorified. So Satan is negotiating a transaction here. But there was a location. He said, Jesus, I want to talk to you. But let's go up the mountain. We don't do these kinds of discussion on a plain land. He took him to an exceeding high mountain where it was only two of them. And then he says, this is, I want to give. 
that one is a deception because when you give something and demand something it's not giving it's business he used a very deceptive terminology he says i will give thee if thou will fall down i will give you pure water if you will give me 100 naira is is that is that charity no satan is negotiating something with jesus your jesus and look at the interesting system he starts by marketing something for him he says before we talk see first so that you will believe me look at the kingdoms and then look at their glories the wealth and then he says now that you have seen and are convinced let us discuss this is my proposal I will give you access from this mountain to all these kingdoms. They will be at your beck and call. What I will get in return, listen carefully, is that you will fall down and worship me. Now imagine, God forbid, but just imagine that Jesus agreed. What do you think would have happened? Jesus would have come down that mountain with strange influence that you cannot explain. You, now, you were not there. All you know is that he bowed down and said, Satan, I'm more interested in the kingdom and the glory. Oh, king, Satan, I acknowledge you as my Lord. I give you my heart. And Satan says, okay, as I agreed. If Satan tempted Jesus, how many other people has he taken to that mountain? To say, come forget about this let me show you how things happen in this earth and then he says look at this i will give you these kingdoms and the glory bow down to me not everybody will say no some people will say yes and will say this is the deal here you have here you have go down immediately they go down in two months their albums are all over the world regardless of what they sing and you say my god this guy is so skilled no something happened up the mountain i pray that god will open your eyes to understand what i'm teaching you tonight there are certain dimensions of the supplies of god that cannot happen by doing business with men you must do business with spirits i cast my crown before listen the highest royalty. Remember, that's what Satan wanted. Bow down and worship me. Satan has been obsessed with allegiance and loyalty. The kingdoms did not mean anything to him. The glories did not mean anything to him. But he knows that it is the system that men need. And so what he decided to do was to make sure that he has control of those systems and then he will continue to call men to say let us negotiate what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world question where did that business happen that he gained the whole world because that is a business terminology what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world where is the law show me where men gain the whole world do they gain it in a bank? Do they gain it in an investment house? Show me where men gain the whole world and give up their soul. That business, when you get there, the commodity is your soul versus the world. Not your product. Your soul and the world. 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 So you now know that he says, I wish above all things that you prosper. But I hope your soul too was not lost while you are prospering. I hope that the way you prospered was God's own way. I know how you are prospered. When your soul does not prosper, it was exchanged for your wealth. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Yabone naka sujadane Sir King Salama, Sir King My concern 
is not your prosperity. I can know what kind of exchange happened by looking at your soul. Immediately I look at your money. The next thing I should look at is your soul. If I find out that your spiritual life went down, there was an exchange that happened on the mountain. Whether you are aware or not, you have followed a system that has sold your soul. There are many, sit down please. There are many men of God. There are many businessmen. There are many captains of industry that gave, received the world and sold their soul. This temptation Satan gave Jesus was not the last time he would give it. He has been giving it till today. So he says, I wish above all things that you will prosper. But I will know how the prosperity came, not by looking at the money, but looking at your soul. When I, I see both your soul and your pocket rising, I know where that grace came from. It can't be the devil. The devil will never allow your pocket and your soul to rise at the same time. So I look at your prosperity and then I look at your soul. I see that in your rising, you gave up your values. You gave up your character. You gave up your family. You gave up your integrity. I know that there is a negotiation happening. You are giving your soul for mundane things. Are we together? Look what Jesus did. Verse 10. Ah. Jesus said, get thee then, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. What was Satan looking for? Allegiance. Satan does not need money. He does not want money. So, Apostle, why is it that Satan, why is it that there is difficulty in meeting our bills at home? Satan knows that men cannot endure hardship indefinitely. So, he manipulates the economy and waits for you on that mountain. He knows that when the pain becomes too much and your church cannot build, the pastor will say, I thank God for this, but I prophesy, Sam, bring one million. Remember, that's not how he started. But because of the pain, we need money. Generator needs to be fueled fast. And now I'm at a point, we brought a man of God abroad and we cannot pay him. So, Sam, bring one million. Bring two million. So, I see the church's financing rising but I look at the soul of the members. So I know that an exchange has happened. The pastor negotiated an exchange. I, I, I'm not saying this in a critical way. The greatest dread of Satan is that you prosper while your soul prospers. What then is his gain? Think how annoying it will be for me as a businessman, this is what I'm selling. Look up, please. And then, I see you hold both money and my product. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, you think what that would do to me. My advantage has been ruined. You have shown me I don't need you. That's the statement that this has happened. And so, when you can have a prosperous soul, and you are empowered economically. Are we together? You get up in the morning and say, my children, we are waiting upon the Lord today. Yet the increment in the school fees does not affect the prayer because the resources are there. Glory be to God. Satan says, what then is my entry point in this family? Thank you. Is God speaking to someone? What shall it profit a man? Please listen to this message. Because I promise you, every one of us, you will climb that mountain. I got, listen, listen, listen. You may climb that mountain and come back with wood. Or you can climb that mountain and come back as a soulless person. That on that mountain, Satan will give you mundane things. And after 30 years of wealth and affluence and increase, 
you will find out that you are on your way to hell. This message is a deliverance to the body of Christ. Listen to me. I can tell you that Satan hates what you are hearing. I call it the warfare dimension of kingdom world. Where the product is your soul versus the world. Your soul. Did you ever hear that they sell souls? Hey, Jimmy is a businessman. Where do you say? I know they sell pure water. Is that true? I know they sell clothes. But he's saying there is a marketplace on earth where the commodity of exchange is the soul of men. Not slave trade was only a mimicking of something that was already in the realm of the spirit. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Everything I need is in you. Hallelujah. Revelation 18, read for me from verse 9. We are reading 9 to 13. Babylon, as a woman, that Jezebel that sits upon the horse, the Bible tells us she's not only a prophetess, she's a businesswoman. Babylon. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, is falling. For in one hour is your judgment come. 11. And the merchants... Who are those who will cry? The businessmen of the earth. How did they become rich? The Bible says the, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Their prosperity was tied to their, their connection with her. Whatever happened to Babylon happened to their business. Are you following me please? What are her merchandise? Look at, these are the products that this woman deals in. Are you ready, believers? Number one, gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, tyan wood, all manner of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, tartine, mm. cinnamon, Odors, ointment, frankincense, wine. Babylon also sells anointing, oil. Did you see it there? And fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses. Help me now, read together. And chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Babylon. Any one of these products you want, she can give you. Give me the souls of men so that my track, when I produce anything, it will get everywhere. And she says, the condition, bow to me. That exchange happens on that mountain. While it's happening, you don't know. The next thing, you just sit down and find out that your soul is glued to their music. There's nothing you can do. You just find out that you buy. You are even minding yourself. The next thing you are nodding your head. Ah, God forgive me. You don't even know what is happening. The souls of men. What kind of a businesswoman is this? That does both physical and spiritual business. Sells gold. Sells anointing for you. You want anointing for ministry. She can give you too. Ha ah. ha. But you always know that it is her product by one single litmus test. As the wealth grows, your soul dies. 
your wealth and your soul cannot grow together when you do business with her. I wish above all things. Koinonia, tell me you are getting blessed tonight. So when your soul is going down and then there is increase coming, could it be that an exchange has happened on that mountain? What shall it profit a man if he gains, gains, loses, gains, loses, business terminologies? You can gain the whole world and then you lose your soul. Is God speaking to us? There is an assault of darkness, listen, over the body of Christ. And let me tell you this. Many people in this country do not know how to prosper God's way. And that includes men of God. Listen to me. I have a responsibility to teach you the truth. Many people do not know how to prosper God's way. And right now that the systems that provide for things like corruption and the rest, the civilization of the world is making men more vocal now. The things they could not say before, they can now say. That means if the truth is not taught, the church alongside the territory is in trouble. There are many men today who became rich by stealing and investing. They don't know anything. They cannot mentor you to be wealthy. They only stole money from some political scoffers and then had that money and had a business partner who helped them to invest the money and now they are rich. You may call them businessmen. You may call them millionaires and billionaires but they have negotiated something. They cannot raise another generation. So right now there's confusion. People love God but they are hungry. Hunger is moving like the angel of death. Are we together now? One by one is meeting families. Some of you, as you are seated right here, if I told you, stand up, let me give you a prophecy that tomorrow will change your financial life, you will be surprised that without your will, you will find yourself standing up. That's to tell you how hard this thing is becoming. Are we together? There are students probably sitting here now that it will take the grace of God. I cannot tell you literally without exaggeration hundreds of text messages by people apostle help our family our rent our this apostle we just finished three days dry you see it there that thing is supposed to be a mockery to the name of the lord we just finished three days dry and god could not solve our hunger problem and then the people continue to contemplate what kind of god is this oh And Satan says, that's exactly what I want. Because let me tell you, when, come Sam, when Sam continues to say, help me, help me, and I say I cannot help him, one day he will stop calling me. He stops calling me because someone else has held his hand and says, let's go to the mountain. You can't keep begging forever. Let me show you. Give me your soul and I will give you tea and bread. He will try it one year and it will not work. He will say, okay, go. I will come back. He will wait till the hunger increases and say, I'm still here. A day will come, that hunger will hit you. And like Esau, you will say, please, what is a portage? What, what do you think happened to Esau? Do you not know that Satan waited until Esau was hungry? Satan always comes to men when they are hungry. He waits until you are hungry. Then he comes with his suggestion. It's a business strategy. Any businessman will tell you that people don't negotiate at a point of convenience. You wait until there is a need. Then you say, okay, here I am again. I told you to sell me the land. You say it was 400,000. Okay, it's because you have food. When the economy hits you, then I bring 250 cash. And then you say, Kai, my wife, what did you say? That Just bring this thing. That's what Satan does. So as a young student who is being rewarded by your parents, you don't sow yet, you reap. And then you are laughing and say, all oh, this finance thing, I don't, I don't mind. And then the next thing, you see a lady and you want to marry her and Satan says, exactly, let the plan work. He will help facilitate your marriage, not because he likes your marriage. He knows that when you are married, a child will come and the reality will dawn on you. 
Now you marry as a prayer warrior and a war giant. And then your wife says, my husband, sorry. My parents are coming and we need a place to keep them. Am I God? Am I the only person on earth? See that? And before you know it, your life begins to be in shambles. One day you will find yourself browsing the internet. Mantras for wealth. Enter. You, you will never believe you would have done that. Zodiac sign. The palm of my hand. What does it mean? Let me know whether they cost me from bed. And they say, put your age. And you say, I, I don't even, I'm not sure. They told me I'm 30, but the way I'm suffering is as if I'm 40. Let me try 40 and see. You see that? You are laughing, but you know you do it because it's the pain. How many prayer leaders, how many pastors, by the grace of God, send me text messages all the time saying, Apostle, I don't, I'm, I'm about to give up. People may not know. They just see me praying and preaching, but I'm tired. Let me tell you the truth. I say it before God, and I say it truthfully. This challenged me because I said it means there's something wrong. Let me tell you this. If you sit down and see your child dying, you will not know when you will do something you never believe you cannot do. You may not do it for yourself. Was it not two women that ate their children? What made them eat their children? Hunger. They ate one whole child. A mother that cannot forget her suckling child didn't cut herself. They would have cut one leg. At least the person is still alive. But they ate the baby alive. And the next day it was to eat the child. Look at the, from Genesis to Revelation. See what hunger did to men. Study what hunger did to men from Genesis to Revelation. Was it not because of hunger Israel went to Egypt? Who took them to Egypt? Not demons. God's covenant people went to Satan. They said, buy us. Money failed. Hunger can take men from Israel to Egypt. Are there not places that some of us are walking today that you sit down and say, but why should I be walking here? I know what happens in this corporation. I know that God is not glorified. I know they are serving the devil. I know that the products and services they are involved in, my, it violates my faith. But the day you talk to your husband or wife that I think I should live here, the day you say that thing again, it's with the back of my hand I will slap you. Did you see the last PTA letter of the child? And Satan says, that's it. And a time will come out of that pain and frustration the young lady will call her ex-boyfriend and say, just to know if you are fine. He said, lie, hunger, taking men from Israel to Egypt. Are we together? This is what I saw coming to Nigeria. This is what I saw coming to Africa. I saw a time and not too distant time when hunger is driving people to do things you cannot believe because the many doors of corruption were just closed this is what i saw in my vision and because most men only corrupt they steal and share and then they steal and share then when you get your own you quickly manage it well but now that the door is closed people are saying what do we do and I saw people going to this woman to say, I need members. If I don't get members, where will I get offering? And then where will I get tight to be able to survive as a church? So Babylon, let's negotiate. Bring members to get more overflows. My soul will be what will be in exchange. If you ever say this cannot happen, you are joking. Do you know the desperation do you know what men can do when they are desperate? Read your Bible and see what... They were willing to go back to Egypt when they were hungry. They left Egypt. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed. When they were hungry, they said, we remember. We remember the garlic. We... Hunger will make you forget the promised land. Hunger will make you love your yesterday more than your tomorrow. I remember when I had this boyfriend. I wasn't going to heaven, but I was in heaven on earth. Now that I gave my life to Christ, 
and left this guy. Look at how miserable my life is. Oh, let us go back. There is garlic. There is cucumber. Is it not in your Bible? And onions. At least we have food to eat. Moses, we are hungry. Was it not on account of supply that Moses missed the promised land? Have you forgotten that they were thirsty and they needed water and they had been nagging at Moses? No leader can survive a hungry people. I don't mean spiritually hungry. They will nag at you and disturb you day and night. You know, there are people who come to my house. They just come and knock. They knock the gate and stand here. I just open the door and they say, I'm hungry. Sometimes they come as a group, group of children and just knock and stand here. Do what you would do with us. We are hungry. That's what happened to Moses. And Moses was, God told him, speak to the rock. He was human. Your humanity plus hunger is not good. And he struck the rock. And God said, no, this is it. You are not going to the promised land. It was hunger that made them build an idol. They said, Moses, we are tired. We are not sure that is this your God you saw in the bush that brought us out. Please, Aaron, come. Put jewelries together. We will sacrifice our gold. Build us an idol so that we will dance and say you are the one who brought us out of Egypt. Was it not on account of hunger many parents now stop going to church? And they say, where was God when they sacked me from Railway Corporation 1999? Where was God when I was crying with my sick child on the bed, needing 150,000 to... I, I prayed and I called on pastors, they prayed, and I watched my child breathe his last breath on something that could be solved. Don't talk to me about church again. You come to preach and they show you the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and tell you, look, before you were born, I was a prayer coordinator. Hunger made me leave the place of God to Egypt. You don't control people by controlling them. You control them by controlling the economy of their territory. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower will always be slave to the lender. You will thank me for what I'm teaching you tomorrow. You will thank me. Because you are listening to this message for your children. You are not just listening for yourself. It will take a selfish and a wicked person to not listen to these truths. Then don't have children. Because woe betide any man. I say this respectfully to our parents and the elderly people here. But most of our parents made this mistake. And that is the the mistake that has produced a negative history for many of the young people seated here looking at me. It was hunger that created the episodes of pain that we do not even want to remember about our lives. Don't transfer that to your children. Hunger made people to marry those who are not the will of God. Hunger made people to be relocated to geographic territories that was not the will of God. Hunger made people to change their age. You will see somebody 50 years by instincts. You know this person is 50 years. He said, no, he's 27. He, he, you, you see that? How many footballers have their true age? I'm so, so you don't think I'm just talking. That's what hunger can do. How many people join occultic fraternities? The fact that they are growing in, I hope I'm right. I heard that early this year. They were stealing ladies' underwears or something like that. Now, listen, that is not a good news. It's to tell you that men are not ashamed to prosper. Did you hear what I said? Let a lady pile her clothes and say you should wash and you see if you are angry. But the native doctor said, go and carry, not, not the head tie, carry the underwear and bring it. And the man is not embarrassed. You can pick that underwear as a graduate, as a bubble, and bounce with it to a shrine because you are desperate for prosperity. Which one is easier, to believe God or to do that nonsense? What shall it profit a man? I don't want to get to a point where at the end of my life, 
I have acquired cars and houses. Koinonia has risen and I look at myself and I look at my soul and my soul is dead. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his money went with him? Koinonia, talk to me. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his real estate disappeared and followed him in the grave? No. Any prosperity that demands your soul to get is of the devil. Let me tell you many ways that this business, because this business has franchise, and one of the way the franchise works is by occupying you with activities that will not let you have time for God. Is that not your soul being sold? It doesn't have to be an occultic negotiation. By the time you have to forfeit a Sunday service where your word is about to come, because if you don't, your boss will sack you. That's your soul going. You do that for one year, you find out you can't remember one memory verse again. You are praying and you will be quoting wise sayings instead of scriptures. Because you have not hidden any word in your heart again. What shall it profit a man? I want to show you one more mystery and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Tonight's call is a serious wake-up call for the sake of our children and our children's children and for the sake of our soul. Why do you think the Antichrist will leave all other things and go to economy? When you talk about the mark of the beast, what did the Bible say the mark was meant for? For buying and selling. Not for going to school. Not for Bible study. The devil knows that where he will get people. How did they get Nigerians to register BBM? Was it not by the threat of their accounts? Did be, did any police carry cane to pursue any man? Register your BVN or your account to be frozen. And people just come and say, please, what? I did my BVN in the night. They opened the bank for me by 8.30. Because I couldn't come in the day. People will lay and harass me. 8.30 in the night, they opened the bank for me. I said, Apostle, come and do your BVN. As anointed, as holy, I still did BVN in the night. When Satan comes to you and finds out that your individualism is not your concern, he will attack your spirituality. When he attacks your spirituality by making you fall from that height, remember that was the temptation, fall from that height, God will protect you. And when you survive that, he knows where to wait for you. He says, keep praying. You will meet me at one junction that is the only road. Only road. He meets you at that junction. It's not a T-junction, it's a bend. And he waits there and says, now, let me negotiate your child's school fees. Let me negotiate. Give me your prayer life and I will give you real estate. Give me the health of your child. Have you not heard of people who have sold different parts of their body for money? Please talk to me. Is it a lie? Give me your fasting and your appetite for God and I will make sure I give you a job in Dubai. And you say, is that the condition? Satan will not come and say, give me your soul like your soul, your heart. Uh -uh. Give me your commitment in the house of God and I will increase your money by 50,000. And he said, commitment, go places. Satan, give me. And Satan is an honest businessman. You will get it. He will give you the 50,000. Then remove commission that will make everything remain 10,000. And say, if you want, I'm still here for business. And before you know it, from settling near Sodom, you will be in the middle of Sodom. What took you there? Why do you think the Bible says whose God is their belly? The logical thing should be whose God is their brain. But it says whose God? Hunger can be a God. And it can make men do things they never planned to do. Are we together? I was sharing with the leaders. 
a little bit about the cost for just transporting people every meeting day and every other time the school of ministry everything for one year is what some people use to build houses but that's what a part of the budget of a department and never has anybody come to say stand up all of you drop one one thousand by force if you don't drop no prophecy or no seeing apostle never will it be never if you ever hear it anywhere know you are dreaming wake up that i ever tell anybody here is my bucket drop two naira and then you see me to receive prayer may god take my life a day to doing that you will say amen because you are kind i want to make heaven i will pray it now don't get me wrong there are people who are experts who provide value and are paid and blessed for it that's not what i'm saying when people dispense value that is packaged, they should be rewarded. So don't confuse that with what I'm saying. I'm saying to say, bring money as the basis for prayer. No, sir. Thy money perish with you. That's what he told by Jesus. Are we together? But if I don't have food to eat, all this mouth that I've carried my big mouth to make, I would twist that statement by the time hunger is serious. If your mother calls you and your mother says, my son or my daughter, is this how you are going to leave me? Remember the womb that bought you. will carry basket and stand there and say, what is, come and drop your money, Jerry. I'm, I'm preaching. I'm doing everything for you free. Most people who do what they do are not bad. They just do not know the systems that bail men out. Say in the name of Jesus, my soul and my pocket will both be healthy. What shall it profit a man? If you are going into ministry, please listen to me with all your heart. Because if you believe your, your ministry, you know, men of God have funny ways they believe ministry will be financed. They just believe one day, one arbitrary kingdom financier will just evolve from somewhere and just say, you keep preaching while I keep giving you money. <laughs> My brothers and my sisters, God gives us wisdom to save us from trouble. The Bible says wisdom is a defense. Is that true? There are sermons you will never be able to preach when you become a beggar. Are we together? Yes. May you never get to a point, man of God, where your members become the Holy Spirit. Where somebody comes and says, here's a check of 10 million. I notice that people don't respect elders. And that becomes your message. The title of my message as revealed by the Holy Ghost is respect. No, it came from an angry rich man. Go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house. And I will take pleasure in it. Are we together now? Let me show you something. Thank you, Sam. Ezra chapter 3. King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my all, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours, my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life. Now let me show you a very deep mystery. That mountain. Ezra will read one to three and then you will jump to seven. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man in Jerusalem. Reading to three and then we'll jump to seven. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the, the priest and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, 
and his brethren and builded the altar of God, of the God of Israel and to offer burnt offerings thereon. And it is written in the, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Three. And they set the altar upon his basis and fear was upon them because the people of the, because of the people of those countries and they offered bond offerings thereon unto the Lord and bond offerings morning and evening go to seven now I want you to listen carefully look up and they gave money also to the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre. Take notes. I want to show you something powerful. To bring what? Cedar trees from Lebanon. Go up the mountain. Bring wood. Build me a house. Now it says they gave them money to go and bring cedar trees according to the grant that they had had of Cyrus, the king of Persia. But notice they did business with certain people. Now, not exchanging their soul, but the Bible says, unto them of Zidon and unto them of Tyre. Follow me. Isaiah 23. You will notice the Bible very strangely talks of a city called Tyre and Sidon. Have you read your Bible? The Bible talks a lot about these cities. I will show you that these cities represented the center of commerce and economy in the earth. Isaiah 23, the first three verses. The burden of where? Tyre. Now look up please, we are walking the word. Haul ye the ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste so that there is no house, no entering in from the land of Shittim, it is revealed to them, we are reading to three. Two. Be still ye inhabitants of the isle. Thou whom the merchants of Zidon. That pass over the sea have replenished. Verse three. I wish we could read it in Amplified. Or any other version. It said and by the great waters. The seed of Sihon. The harvest of the river. Is her revenue. And she tire is the merchant. The word mat there is the merchant of the nations. There's no other version you can find. Oh dear. Okay. It says was Tyre's revenue. Can you see there? It said and she Tyre became the merchandise. That is the city, the center of economy of the nations. Are we together? What was Satan called in Isaiah 28. Who is the king of Tyre? Talk to me. Who is the king of Tyre? The very king of that mountain. Satan himself. The governor. The protector of that mountain. Tyre and Sidon. The economic center of the earth. Satan allows other demons and other spirits to occupy other mountains. But he takes the mountain of economy and becomes the king of Tyre. I will wait there. Whoever comes will meet me there. He will not meet a demon. He will not meet an archangel. He will not meet anyone. He will meet Satan himself. Listen, I can tell you where Satan is. It's not in your village. No. I know where he is. He's at the center of where the exchange happens for the house of God to be built. I know where Satan is. Satan is where your resources should come from to make sure your family stays in peace. That's where he is. I know where Satan is. Satan is at the point where your business needs to grow so that it will cause you to negotiate. Satan is obsessed about economy. My brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you do not sustain an ability, I'm going to round up tonight by teaching you the system, the warfare dimension upon that mountain. Because although Satan is there, 
God still says, climb the mountain. Climb the mountain. Was it not on the mountain both Elijah and the prophet met? But Elijah returned back victorious. Was it not on the Mount of Transfiguration Jesus climbed and he returned back? And together with the three guys, many things happened in the mountain. And one of it is the victory of the saints economically. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. I, 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 I pray from the depth of my heart that you will understand what I've said and see the value of it in your life. It will surprise you, my brothers and my sisters, when men are leaving God, selling their souls to the devil, and you stand together with your wife and your children, and you say, Lord, I give you the glory. In fact, let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, just go back to King, to, uh, king James so that we'll hurry up. We are praying. Is God blessing someone? Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of what? Talk to me, please. An image of gold. Whose height is 90 feet. And he set it up in a plain called Dura. In the province of Babylon. Read on. The Bible says, and Nebuchadnezzar. Now, look at this. Nebuchadnezzar first set up a 90 feet statue of pure gold. Then look at all the people he gathered. Look at the quality of men that he gathered to come and bow down to that thing. Are you ready? He sent a letter to gather what? The princes. Read on. And the governors and the captains and the judges, judiciary and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs, local government chairmen and the rulers of provinces to come to the dedication. If you were not influential, you were not invited. Satan wants to dedicate his image in the land and handpick certain people to say you are invited. Listen. It was on account of that that certain gentlemen... <laughs> Let me show you yourself now. Verse 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we read verse 3, let's go to verse 6. Very instructive statement. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before, please go back to verse 3. Let's finish first. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 6 now. Read it for me. This is exactly why I am preaching all that I've been preaching. Read if you're a Christian. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst. Why is economists use the term financial meltdown? Not financial cool cool off or ice ice, uh, what do we call it now financial meltdown is that true? if God grants grace I will teach you something powerful because you know the Holy Spirit just ministers something you know when Jesus crossed to the other side the pigs were on a mountain that, and they possessed the pigs were roaming around the mountain Pigs in the Bible stand for unclean animals. They were on the mountain and there was a spirit in a madman. As soon as Jesus came, watch this. Immediately the, the madman met Jesus. When he casted out the demons, the demons said, don't take us out of here. And they entered the pigs and everything went down. Who were those who attacked Jesus? The merchants. They said, you are doing something to our economy. By delivering one person. Something happened to their economy. They said, get out of this land quickly. It was not the politician. It was those who were in the economy that felt the heat. When you read in the Bible, there was a time they flogged Paul in the market square. They dragged him to a market square, not a police station, and flogged him in the market square. 
my brothers and my sisters, there are mysteries in our world. If it is economy you want to conquer, the little knowledge and the certificate you are holding will not go very far. If you listen to what I'm telling you, you will rise as if you are holding a charm. If you sit down there, this thing will squeeze you in a way. Whosoever will not fall down and bow and worship that image, the same hour, what is the punishment? Be cast into a financial recession. If you will not bow to God, then the devil does something to your finances. Seven, Jesus. <laughs> Mighty God. Let's go to verse eight. Wherefore, at that certain time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Nine. And they spake to the king Nebuchadnezzar. Listen carefully now. O king, live forever. Ten. O king has, has made a decree. Thou, O king, has made a decree that this and that and that and that happens. Eleven. And all of that, whosoever does not fall will do this. Verse 12. There are certain Jews. This is where we come in now. Listen carefully. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs. So they were men of influence. There are certain attacks that never come to you until you are influential. So the fact that it has not come does not mean it's just that you have not made any mark for the kingdom enough to warrant that attack. It's not a sign that your faith is working. There are many people, that because the devil just left you to do your thing, you believe that it's because of your intelligence. It's just that you are not making any mark whatsoever in the realm of the spirit. And so you are not disturbed. But the day God blesses you small, and they say you are now promoted to become a manager, that's the day you have a dream you never had. You just had that your father said he had the dream once, and you recorded it. On that day, a stranger comes and said, let me introduce myself to you. I appeared to your father 35 years ago. Look at his life. And I appeared to your mother 36 years ago. Now you have qualified for my appearance. By your promotion, you have gone too far. Let's talk. And you wake up, ah, blood of Jesus, I just bind you. And then the next thing, you go to the office the next day. And they say, sorry, some people stole money and they found some money on your desk. Go down. And the man says, I told you, bow to me or rise. But if you learn what I'm showing you now, you can stand and say, Satan, this is my money. This is my gold. But I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Satan, it's not that I'm too proud to bow. It won't be to you. My refusal to bow is not arrogance. It's that it can't be to you. I cannot serve God and mammon. No, sir. Let it not be that I'm trying to run a parallel government with God. My refusal to bow is not pride. But this is what I'm saying, that there is one who is worthy of my praise. Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana. Listen, I come from a family where these forces don't stop you to rise. Just go ahead and rise. There is a level, you know how a rubber ring is. Listen carefully. You can pull it. You get to a point where it will swing you back in one day. So people rise, oh, educated. My father started working at age 26. But when you get to a point, something happens. You know how the swine just fell down and crashed into the sea. That's how your whole life, finances, everything crashes down. 
What were they looking for? Bow to me and I will give you the keys. But they were certain koinonia members. Shadrach, Meshach, Joshua Selman. He said, this man, O king, have not regarded thee. Listen, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image. There are certain men who are prospering strangely in Zaria. And we have researched well and we found out that they don't serve idols. They love God with all their heart and yet they are rising. O king, give an answer. Because I thought you said for anybody to rise, their soul must go. But we have found certain people, their soul prospers as their finances prosper. The more they help their parents, they are rising. The more they, they are blessed prosperously, they use that money and they are still fasting and praying even as millionaires. Oh king, give an answer. And the king said, you mean it? Bring the boys. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury. Stop. It will never tire me to share with you my vision. I don't share too many of my experiences. Remember I told you, I know what this means. It was in this area that I was praying and fasting and crying before God. And all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared. And then here comes a strange being like a dinosaur and looks at me the eyes is as one eye is as big as the head of a man two eyes fiery red eyes and the tail was a snake it had its own life although it was attached to that being and the being was looking at me and i was looking at it my god i didn't bargain for this what is all this now what is this I'm a preacher that is just teaching truth and wants to help people and make meaning out of my life. And this spirit looks at me. That was when I knew that in the realm of the spirit, there is a soul thermometer. They measure the rising of men. Listen, I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, believe it. When you are rising, there is a system. I will show you shortly. By the time you rise to any significant level, Beyond certain threshold, there will be an invitation of certain guests. And they will say, gentlemen, we have watched you. We started watching your grandfather since he was a reverend. We watched your grandmother as a prayer warrior. Nobody rose beyond this level. What is these tongues you always pray every night? And these koinonia messages you are always listening to? Uh, they are doing something that is threatening our continuity in your family. When that spirit appeared, I looked at it. It was looking at me. And this is what it said. So you think you can bring God's people into abundance. That was the conversation. Wow. What devil is this? It was from that day, I knew that men can be gatekeepers. They can, you don't knock when you have a key. You only knock so that you somebody who has the key will open but when you have a key the bible says you should knock because you don't have the key but when you have the key knocking ends it was in 2007 i had a vision many things happened in that vision but that was when the Lord revealed to me his wealth agenda for the church. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, people like Ejimi are really the ones anointed with the mantle and the grace for wealth. I'm just somebody who knows God and understands the counsel of God. Like Paul, I have met these spirits. I know they are real. So when I talk, I don't talk because I read a book. No, I've seen it. You see, there are things that when you see, you don't fear again. What, what are you going to be afraid of? The pride of men? Men that are like vapor? From that day, something happened to me. 
and I will give you the keys of David. He says, and you shall open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open. You see, let me tell you, it is part of the burden of the apostolic ministry that God mandates you to laboriously go through that pain, but it's not for yourself. It is for the sake, please be sensitive, listen. There is a grace from that encounter. When I got that thing, I knew, case closed. Not for me, not for the ministry. These horns will never lift up themselves, their heads again. My brothers and my sisters, in any case, you must give your soul to someone. Bow to me. Otherwise, you will enter the fiery furnace. Do you now see why Christians are the ones suffering more? Aside from our pride and our refusal, the devil particularly made sure that he takes our case personal. The moment you are making an altar call, they are watching you from the realm of the spirit. You come out and say, Lord, take my heart, take my life. Lord, I know I come from a family of 70 people and nobody ever handed their lives to you. But Lord, let me be the first. I give you everything. And when you are in your room praying alone, shakatabata, Lord, I will change, I will rewrite the history of my family. That thermometer is rising in the spirit. And it's being watched. You think you are alone. But there are witnesses. And a day will come when you will just say, Lord, I vow to you that no matter what you give me, you will be Lord over it. The devil will say, no, come quickly. Meet this guy. This kind of commitment is the same thing as selling your soul to the devil. Halakbara You are the mighty God Hey, Latobi Jew You are the glory Halakbara Hey, you are the mighty God. Hey, that's all we need. You are the glory. I like my rock. I like my rock. You are the mighty God. Hey, that's all we need. Say, no, 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 no. One more time. Listen to me. Please listen. Every time you pass through faces and realms in the spirit, you are given three things. One, you are given keys, a symbol of access. Two, you are given an anointing to bring men into that experience. Three, you are given an enlarged audience in the spirit. God will cause men to hear what you are saying. These are the blessings of sacrifice and the furnace of affliction in the spirit. Don't just see people getting blessed and think they were lucky or that they are just business people who understand business. It's more than that, my brothers and my sisters. Some of the people you see are forged from the furnace of affliction. I have seen spirits and I have met with devils. I know. We are not financially dull. But we know that there is a warfare dimension. Fighting for the soul of men. We are able to focus today and teach the truth of God's word. And not go ask any man under the sun to give. Because God has been faithful. And he continues to be faithful. There are keys that you hold that you will never fear their fears. You will never call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. We are not talking of this money-mongering thing. This appetite and loss for wealth that can make men kill for money. Please don't mistake in what I'm teaching. That's not what I'm teaching. I'm teaching a battle for your soul. That Satan is using money to fight your soul. He used your past, it did not work. He used your bloodline, it did not work. Now he's coming by himself to fight 
A woman, because of hunger, said, take my children as collateral. That's what Satan wants. The wife of a prophet, even in a man of God's house, there can be hunger. Even in a prophet's house, there can be hunger. I came tonight to blow a trumpet in Zion and to sound the alarm upon a mountain. When I saw this in the visions of the Lord, I knew that if I don't teach this, there is trouble. Brothers and sisters, hear what I say. I saw hunger coming. I saw it. I'm not a false prophet. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not one person who will come out every time and tell you God said God did this. No. But I saw hunger manipulated by the gates of hell. It has nothing to do with economy or political party. This is Satan. And the hunger continues to bring annoyance. Listen. That hunger, Satan is bringing that hunger to scandalize a lot of men of God. That hunger will attempt to scandalize many ministries. Because people will begin to rise up to say, let's probe the account of this church. Let's probe the account of this man of God. And in it, many people will be found wanting. And this is why the Lord is teaching this. So that there can be a system of escape. Because many of us are already following that route. Because of hunger, you don't know the difference between your account and your fellowship account. You can fetch from anyone and say, God, forgive me. When I grow, I'll, I'll manage it. This is what the devil is planning. And he will continue to make you in lack so that you implicate yourself. And one day when you are well implicated, he will boomerang you. That's the mistake that many people have made today. And it will take the grace and the mercy of God. You see these things I speak, I speak in parables. Hunger will make many people dip their hands in a pot that is meant for God. Hophni and Phinehas, they were just supposed to use the pruning fork to pick something out for themselves. But hunger made them to select the portions and brought ruin and destruction to their lives. Go up the mountain and bring wood. Is money not made out of wood? Is paper not made out of wood? He tells you the location. You must go up the mountain. I will take another. There will be a part two of this. But there is a warfare dimension. And I want you to pray. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. There are gatekeepers. The king of Tyre himself is seated there. By the time your father tried to get there, and this thing struck them down. But now you have come. We have no time. Like the three Hebrew boys, O oh king, we will not bow. I will be blessed, yet my soul will also prosper. I will not trade my integrity as a Christian for money. Lift your voice and pray. I like you to blast in tongues. The kings of the earth who have benefited from their harlotry with her shall wail and say, Alas, Babylon, that great city in one hour is your destruction come. Shabakatakata, Shakatakatakatakatakate, Shaprokoto Pakato Sekete, Embreketo Sekelekata. Are you praying? Shabrakos Keparokatos Sekelekata, Shakatakatakatakatakate, Kaprandos Kaprekete. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Listen. 
it is never about lack of job it is never about lack of house rent money it is never about your business crashing or your business failing it is never about lack of customers you are in a warfare that you are not aware of it's a fight not for your money for your soul satan how can hold on please how can satan be fighting for money that's nonsense he's only using money to fight for your soul my brothers and my sisters what shall it profit a man i say it again there are many people about losing their soul because of business losing their soul because of money losing their soul listen i like you to pray and say lord as for me my allegiance for you and with you is in life and in death lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh God. You are my El Shaddai. I decree. And I declare. That what you cannot give me. I will never receive it from anyone. Anywhere you do not take me. May I not go whatever you do not give me may i never get it lord i declare that the dimensions of wealth and prosperity needed for my life and your house pass it through me lift your voice and pray may i become your treasurer a steward of your resources. Sapakatoske Levaratos, Embracatoske Brates, and Sekatekato Baratos. Pass it to me, O God. Pass it to me, O God. May I be a steward, trusted with the resources of heaven trusted with the resources of heaven trusted makatoske prakatoshe ketelekata hallelujah say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus i declare that my children and all those who will come from me all those connected from, to me because of my life they will never beg for bread lift your voice and pray i will be that savior in the name of jesus i will be that savior in the name of jesus i will be that savior in the name of jesus my children will never beg for bread Hallelujah. 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 I like us to pray. 
And while we're praying, I'm going to give our sisters an instruction. Lay your hands on your womb. And while you are praying, tell yourself, you, I cut off my children from poverty forever. Whether you have a child or not, everyone lift your voice and pray. I cut off my children from the lineage of poverty, the lineage of hardship. I will not give birth to children who will be beggars. I will not give birth to children who will serve Satan because of the need for resources. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please give us Psalm 112. Quickly, please. Psalm 112. We're rounding up. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It starts with the fear of God. It doesn't start with a business idea. It starts with the fear of the Lord. That delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation, until both your seed and generation, we are not talking of food to eat. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you this. The body of Christ is full of selfish people who just have enough to eat. They have enough to take a flight. They have enough to pay their rent. And so they think it is okay. You are a selfish person. Do not make the mistake of Esther to forget that you are also part of the Jews. When her man wanted to destroy the Jews, Esther said, I'm comfortable. And Mordecai said, do not think that when they finish with us, you will be free. There are families and there are individuals that are not begging for bread. So when they hear this kind of teaching, they say it's a waste of time. It's a wicked thing as a man of God. Listen, I'm preaching from my heart. There are some of you who have come here now with envelopes, with seats inside, waiting to bless me as a man of God. And I appreciate it. And it will be wicked if you are blessing me as a man of God and I don't empower you to prosper. How do you get the resources? Are you thieves? I'm able to preach and I'm able to spend time with God because my needs are met. My family is taken care of and then I can focus to serve the Lord and bless you. If the devil uses economic empowerment to scatter those things, my time will be spent on intercession for money rather than I will now leave the ministry of the word and start doing the matter of tables. I will never be the man of God who will raise men who are spiritually powerful and then economically down. No. When you start a move like this, you are usually misunderstood until you see the excellency of a balanced spiritual life and the convenience that it provides for you and your family. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Next verse. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And yet his righteousness, his soul will still prosper. I hear you are five in your family and your dad is dead. Your mom is dead. From today I become a father in this family. Simple. For starters, move out of this place into a two-bedroom flat. Look, let me tell you something. It's called quantum leap. I'm trusting that God will take us into this dimension. David, you will do a little experiment. Eh? You will take three steps and then you will jump forward. 
like a frog ready now watch let me show you the difference between progress and a quantum leap are you ready this is progress two three now jump this is a quantum leap i know it's a little analogy but see if you if there is no provision like this your lifetime is too small for you to be successful at the rate humans move you will never build a house till you die at the rate your salary is being paid you will never do anything useful at the rate church services are held you will never know god with the amount of the sermons you need a quantum leap i have witnessed it in my life many people here are witnesses of it where god will just all of a sudden change somebody's story i tell you i feel the anointing as i'm saying this this is what many of us need tonight a quantum leap this issue of moving here and there okay thank god you are now employed you are earning forty thousand. let's be sincere let's be sincere in the name of jesus christ who died and rose again in how many years will forty thousand build a house for you now i know many people say it does not matter it matters to any responsible person how much does it take to marry forty thousand the auditorium is how much how much does it take to a child's school fees a child's school fees right now a child who cannot talk the school fees is hundred hundred and something thousand to just teach them how to play and you plan to have five you better listen to what i'm telling you this is why people are, are depressed depressed someone is driving and talking to himself till he dies till he dies because of depression we need a quantum leap Where the grace of God comes upon your life, divine acceleration, triumph, triumph, shaka pataya, triumph by the Spirit. There are ministries that need quantum leaps. If all you do is to invite members through posters, let me tell you the truth get set for empty pews. Please help those under the anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in life is to move like men, men, I'm ready more than ever. Let me tell you, it's like a flight. I've been having an interesting experience with the Holy Spirit in the last two, three weeks. My goodness, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a preparation for a quantum leap. This man you see has gone home. I'm, I'm, I'm only saying you better believe God and arise. Don't let anybody tell you, don't listen to him. Run away from them. They won't help you when you are in trouble. You'll be surprised to see how the vicissitudes of life will distract you. All these problems we are solving is to give us space to pursue our assignment. Not to build a house for building's sake. Not to buy a car for buying a car's sake. Not to eat well for whatever it is. So that if you decide to lock yourself in your house to worship God for 24 hours, nobody will call you and say, why are you worshiping God? You can't be in church and someone calls you and says you better come and on the machine on which machine you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because for you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible that we stand in here only because you can listen Brothers, let me talk to you. Do you know right now? Please come. When you see a gentleman like this, do you know if this gentleman is successful, many elders will ask him, what are you doing? In other words, how come your life is this fast? Society has made people's growth rate so slow. If you buy a car at 45, they say, wow, wonderful. You are responsible. But you buy a car at 22 and see people say you're a witch. If they see a young man succeed, you see everybody saying, uh-uh, 
at this life two plus two it doesn't add up god wants to accelerate the kingdom the coming of jesus is near there is a lot we must do for the kingdom listen you can't spend your life looking for money it's a cost it's a cost it's a cost to spend your life looking for what to eat and what to drink you will never serve god that way pray eight hours when you are hungry you are joking you may endure but your children will not endure listen hold on please i want you to pay attention to what i'm telling you you see me preaching from my heart otherwise we'll keep playing games and at the end many christians will backslide pastor jakes they will leave god how many believers do you know who are not standing again because the reality of life we said this thing many years people insulted us and said we're noisemakers those people today some of them are not born again they are not even in christ again they've gotten into all kinds of things survival is a cause you should resolve that issue and spend your life serving god if you are a brother here when i say pray please pray pray the sisters can join but brothers you must pray you shouldn't stand and just be leave any man of god thing and cry listen there are some of you as you are listening to me right now there are seven siblings or six who are waiting for you to take care of them you have your own mother you have your own father and I, how are you going to live that's the cause of depression and then god calls you into ministry no job you want to marry you want to move forward you, you must be a joker you must access another mystery brothers and sisters you must trust god for a quantum leap tonight there is a grace there is a grace the name is a grace there is an unction that helps men and expedites their process in life the climate is too harsh for an average young man the probability for establishment is is almost like passing through the eye of a needle the factors are too many and we're standing here only because and we're standing here only because you made a way, made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people here. Listen. Home and abroad, their entire families are earning 200,000. But every week, they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone. I heard of a woman, 70,000 naira every week. God is my witness. They spend on, is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that? And there is no guarantee the person, you see how the devil works until all your money finishes, then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble. How many of you right now, nobody to help you in your life? Lift your voice in one minute and cry. Cry for the help of God. Koinonia, pray, pray. Shabakato sebara balaba. Zakata paroko to sepreketi. Shekete pereko sopra na balaba balaba. Don't know how, but you did it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Lord, I cry. Hear me, O oh God. My life must make progress. My life must make progress. Outside, are you praying? My life must make progress. My life must make progress. 
Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Listen. Listen. I want us to break out of cycles tonight. Are we together? I'm going to minister to you, God. There are people here. You are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life. Nobody rises beyond the level. Go to school or not. It's a pattern you must break. Don't watch it happen and say it's all right. Nothing solves itself by itself. You must engage it with faith. Lord, this poverty thing, I've seen it in my family. We are not lazy people, but I'm seeing it come. This lack of being serious with God, lift your voice and break every cycle. Lift your voice and command, exempt yourself. Exempt yourself. Accept yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i'd like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah hallelujah two more prayer points before i begin to minister to us listen hallelujah jesus said satan come to me and does not find anything of himself if Satan finds what belongs to him in you, he's authorized to destroy you. We are going to pray and we are going to say, Lord, whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny, I apply the blood. I invoke the mystery of the blood. Lift your voice and pray. Legal access. I apply the blood. Are you praying? I apply the blood. That speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood on my children. I apply the blood. Pray on my husband, on my wife, on my business, on my ministry, on my job. I apply the blood. No divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail. Hallelujah. Please keep 
standing. Keep standing, everyone. We are going to pray now. I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit. Luke 18, verse 1. Please, quickly. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2. There's something I'm looking for. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, avenge me of my adversary. Stop there. God is a God of vengeance. Listen, listen. I know that's the nasty side of God. But the God I serve is not only merciful. God, there are people who don't need mercy. They need vengeance. You don't pray if you don't believe it. But let me tell you something. There is a God of vengeance. He said, let God arise. And let all his enemies be scattered. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, avenge. I cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness. In my life, my family, Koinonia, pray. Arise, Soko Topakaya. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of this throne. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Oh God of vengeance, arise against the wicked. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Oh God of vengeance, arise against evil doers. Arise against them that seek to feed on the flesh of your people. Hallelujah. Listen. There was a man in the book of Esther called Haman. Have you heard about Haman? That man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God. Not just the Jews. The agenda of God. The apple of his eyes. And then the Bible says through a lot of activities. When that plot was gotten, the king sent. And he said they should go and hang him. He already built a gallow in advance. In advance. We live in a wicked world, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, it's not all about vengeance, but there is a dimension of it that is necessary. If you must break through, the wickedness of men is beyond imagination. You are going to pray it again. Lord, there are powers that have tied down my life and my family. Arise, O God of vengeance. Arise, O God of vengeance. Arise, O God of vengeance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I was told the story of a woman, Pastor Jakes. Married a man that God had blessed. And then the man died. As soon as the man died, strangers came from left, right, and center and told her, you have no inheritance in this. They stripped that woman to the last of everything. Banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no you rejoice in my pain the god of vengeance will arise for you i tell you only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it he said rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet i will rise again how many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends they lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check sign them off say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia 
I know many of us are young people, but let me tell you, when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility, you will appreciate this prayer. There are men who will kill you and bury you smiling. They will kill you and bury you smiling. When Judas came to kiss Jesus, a kiss is a sign of love, correct? Yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy. This is the guy. This is how you will kill him. How many people kissed you into your suffering today? They kissed you with a stupid advice. And that's, that's what has landed your life today. They told you, stop tithing. These men of God are crooks. They have destroyed your life. Are we together? Tonight, I want us to engage the word. To engage the word with your spirit. If you insist, brothers and sisters, God will give you a breakthrough. If you insist, God will give you a breakthrough. Are we together now? I want you to pray one last prayer and then I'll begin to minister by the Spirit. Lord, visit the root cause of my challenges. I may not know what it is. I only know the effect. Oh God, go to the root. It says every tree, the axe is placed at the root. Every tree my father has not planted. Lord, go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life. The root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands. The root cause. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If after tonight's meeting, you return with a testimony, nobody will ask you to run to the house of God. You will go by yourself. Do you know how many, why many people never see God? The truth is they are tired of lack of results. They are tired of it. Jumping around, doing all kinds of things. Yes, you don't love God just for results. But you've heard me say it again. At a point in your Christian experience, results must come as consolations to your serving God. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight. Let me make an altar call. Let's start with the altar call first. So that we'll finish right now. Please, everyone standing, no moving around. Outside, your attention. There are people right here. Everything we boast of is in Christ. If you are not in Christ, there is no guarantee. Please listen very carefully. If you are not in Christ, there is no guarantee whatsoever. Are we together now? So you are here, we are talking about witchcraft, you have joined us to pray congratulations, but nothing will happen to you until there is a translation. Because when a man is not in Christ, the Bible says he is in the kingdom of darkness, the very domain of darkness. Are we together now? So when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith, there is a spiritual transfer. It is only on that basis you can challenge darkness. There are two categories of people very quickly. I'm going to make the altar call quickly. When you come, Pastor Jakes will lead you in prayer. And then we'll take over and fly tonight. And trust God to take us to a realm where we will never return. Never return to this level. In the name of Jesus. You are here and you are saying, man of God, it's as if you are just prophesying to me. You are right. It's you I'm speaking to. And I'm going to make an altar call. One, maybe two, three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can 
Can God give me a new beginning? Absolutely. No one has made it in my family. You will be the first. If and only you receive him. He says, as many as believed in him, even to them that, I mean, as many as received him, even to them that believed in him, he gave them power to become. Power to become. You do not have the power, but you have the will. And you can choose. Right now, I'm going to make an altar call. Whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time, or you want to rededicate your life. Man of God, I gave my life to Christ, but somehow things have gone haywire. No problem. You are welcome. If you are outside, run like there's fire on the mountain. Any of the overflows, you are inside here. You run out. I will count one to five very quickly. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are thinking about it, go back to your seat. Give Jesus praise. Please clear the way for them. There are people running outside. Let Jesus Christ step into your destiny. Koinonia, can you motivate them? Appreciate them as they come. Don't let any friend tell you why you're disgracing yourself. Shame the devil over your life tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. Just make that step of faith and come. Quickly. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. There are still more people. There are still more people. If you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you, leave him alone and come. Run to Jesus. in front can you just lift up your hands lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender are you following please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart Jesus loves you I want you to understand that just say dear Lord Jesus say it out loud I want to hear you speak say dear Lord Jesus I come before you I ask for forgiveness for my sins I believe in the power of your blood I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of for all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as your hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just the moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please. Let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister, I have a sister also, someone inside and someone in the overflow outside. The power of God is going to come on that person now. God is bringing a strange deliverance. I'm seeing a strange deliverance. Bring the person one inside, one outside. I just want to speak to them. Please, quickly. We have a lot to do tonight, and we want to conserve time. Jesus. 
Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. Free now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Free. I'm going to pray for you. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Listen, what is deliverance? Deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor. Deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm already seen in the spirit. Mighty. Especially today, God is visiting visitors. If you are here for the first time, God is visiting visitors in a very strange way. Lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted. Please bring them. Just keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. God is touching people. It's a foolish instruction, but it's what the Lord is telling me. Just keep your hands lifted. Like fire. It's coming on people inside and outside. Bring them out. God is visiting visitors. Visitors, visitors. Doesn't mean other people are not being touched, but particularly visitors. Father, spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. There are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives, their destinies, in the name that is above all names. Whoever under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life, as we shout that name, Jesus, there will be an eruption of fire in this place. And all of a sudden, God will begin ministering to people. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three. They must go from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit, I command every devil, strange spirits, tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. Mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. The power of witchcraft being broken. Being broken. Being broken. God is addressing issues of oppression. Oppression. Shakataya. It must end now. It must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. 
Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, Shakata Bakata, under the yoke of setbacks, whether you are a visitor, whether you've been here for a long time, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. The power of God is touching people. Delay, 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 delay. You are a strange spirit. I curse you by the God of heaven. Delay in destiny. Delay in achievement. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. Bring the mommy out. There's a mighty deliverance happening to her. Delay over your family. Broken, broken, broken. Broken by the spirit. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me a strange instruction. Please, sisters, lay your hands on your womb. Lay your hands on your stomach. Something remarkable is going to happen here right now. There is a kind of deliverance God is doing. I don't know what I'm even doing. But Lord, I pray right now. This is not for everybody. But I am seeing the Lord is instructing that they lay their hands. And I'm going to pray a prayer for you. You'll be surprised. Every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of Jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now one two three release them now 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 Hallelujah. Johnson. Johnson. I'm hearing a name Johnson. 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 We are still praying, please. Johnson. My God, I tell you, I see this fire falling on sisters. I don't know what it is with ladies. God is God is ministering a serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully i'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are i'm prophesying now and i'm praying for you the power of god is looking for those people the power of god is looking for those people you rise to a level 
and fall. You rise to a level and fall. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Inside and outside, wherever you are, I release that fire like a messenger to your life. Like a messenger to your life. I cast that witchcraft now. I cast that witchcraft now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision. My God, hold on. I'm seeing deliverance for children. Like little children. The power of God is coming on small children in this place. I'm seeing children being delivered. Some initiated into occultism. Some initiated into this. Let's just walk the way God is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation. Wherever they are, don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting. Now, wherever they are, inside and outside i'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage I set them free now. I set them free now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, lift your hands. That gentleman going. Tap him. Hi. There is hardship in your family. And the Lord is asking me to curse it. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I cause hardship. Let the anointing of the Spirit come on you now. I cause that Spirit. The Spirit of hardship. I cause you now. I cause you now. I cause you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, if you are here and you have any blood disease, just blood disease, any kind, any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest i want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please i want to pray for you right now the lord is giving me that instruction very quickly i want to pray for you I'm seeing a lady who is AS. God is about to change her genotype now. 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 A dramatic change of genotype from AS to SS. From AS to AA. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please. If you come from a family where no one in your family is working, lift your hands. Nobody, no job. Nobody, just, please just do what I'm asking you to do. Let's save time. Just lift your hands. Nobody at all is working. No matter what happens, just lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus. 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 I'm, I'm looking at hands lifted and, and for some of the hands I'm seeing like a rope. This is not necessarily you. This is a representation of your family and I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Get ready for the power of God. Right now, wherever you are, even those who didn't lift their hands, I decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I release them. 
I release them. I release their jobs. I release their jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. 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 The the Holy Ghost we end joblessness here right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people. One seven, one seven, one seven. At the count of four, this is the instruction God gives me. Unusual access to illumination. Lord, where are they? Inside and outside. One. Two. Three. Strange illumination. Four. Take it now. Take it now. The spirit of revelation on common access to the secrets of the kingdom. On common access. 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 I release it in the spirit. Access. 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 Hallelujah. Please make sure you receive every word that is coming. Every word. Come. God is going to use you. Come. Come and stand here. Lift your hands. Stand up. In the name of Jesus. I don't know you. Huh? But an anointing will come upon your life today. And God is going to change your life like day and night. Receive that grace right now. Strange grace. Step into that dimension. That dimension. There are impartations going on now. Let's just receive the impartations. Impartations. Not healings. Not healings. Impartations. Impartations. I release the gifts of the Spirit right now. Right now. I release the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, stir up the fountain. Stir up the waters. Stir up the waters. I release the gifts of the Spirit. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange manifestations of power, of power, healing anointings, healing anointings. I activate healing anointings right now. Healing anointings. Step into it. Step into it. Outside, inside. Step into it. God is releasing mantles, mantles of healing, ancient mantles of healing, ancient mantles. Grace for barrenness. Grace for barrenness. Grace for barrenness. Healing barren cases. Hallelujah. Hold on. I'm still praying. I'm still praying. God wants to release the healing anointing. Let's just stay here with this healing thing. God wants to release there are many more people i'm not seeing them receive it yet father you want to release this grace there is such a grace as the healing anointing i pray for you right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado may the power of god come on you now everyone everyone everywhere men women take it take it Take it, fire upon your spirit. Hello, Himadonai. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, Himadonai. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, I don't know how we are going to manage this now. Ushers, there is a prophecy for you. The Lord says I should tell you from now, as you hold people and as you shake them, there will be a transference on every one usher. I'm prophesying now. That's why I say I don't know what we'll do. Ushers, ushers, receive that mantle. Receive that mantle. A strange healing grace. 
coming on our ushers. Supernatural, supernatural, the unction. Take it, take it where you are. Let that fire come upon you, upon ushers in a strange way, upon ushers in a strange way. The grace for the miraculous. No longer will you just hold people. No longer will you just welcome people. As you clean the seats, you release strange mantles. Hallelujah. We'll soon pray for the sick. But please, everyone, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want to pray. I'm seeing people here. The anointing for business and entrepreneurship. Just keep your hands. That's why. Please keep your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't say I'm not calling to a businessman. That's none of your business. Just listen to what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. It's a grace. It's a grace. I believe maybe in the course of the service, we'll call a Jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly, truly upon your life. Lift your hands. Brothers and sisters, there is a grace for the marketplace. You don't go there through desire. It's not that you are a, mon a money monger, you just go. But strange ideas, strange insight. Do you know, I'm seeing a number 4 and 1, 41. This will affect many people inside and outside. Whether you are a businessman or not, it's not what I'm asking you. That grace will locate you where you are. A grace for the marketplace. Lord, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, all the overflows online anyone here who must step into that grace whether you know anything about the marketplace or not take that grace now take that grace now i release it supernatural access 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 to business strategies access to ideas Take it right now. Receive it, receive it. It's coming on people. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, it's coming on you. So that you will go and prosper. 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 There is a woman, one of our mothers, this grace that I'm talking about is coming on you now. Now. One of our mothers, one of our mothers is receiving that grace. God is releasing that grace. Whether you are inside or outside, whoever it is, I release that grace now. There is a woman I'm seeing in the spirit. You must take that grace now. You must take that grace now. Uncommon ability. Uncommon ability. Uncommon insight. For the works of your hands to begin to produce fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Please help them. How many of you are trusting God to restore something that has left your life? It can be anything. How many of you are trusting God? I want to release that grace now. And I want you to believe it. Some of you had destiny help us. But something happened and they left your life. Some of you had quality relationships. But it left your life. Some of you had finances. But it left your life. Some of you even had certain levels of graces. The Lord is asking me to prophesy restoration Kai, this is going to land on people's head i'm seeing this thing there are physical gifts you used to see in your life not gifts of the spirit not just gifts of the spirit gifts gifts endowments for some reason it disappeared some of you are actually worshippers singers but that grace left is coming back is coming back Kapataya. I invoke the grace that he has put upon my life 
I prophesy strange restoration. I call it by name and I command it back to your life. I call it by name. Everything you once were that you now are not, I command you to become it now. I command you to become it now. I release that grace. I release that grace. Receive it. I release that grace. I release that grace. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. There are some of us, hear me. You have been doing certain things. But the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life. This is a very serious prayer. I want to pray for you. You have been doing business with the brain of a money monger. But not the grace for the marketplace. You have been singing only with the voice of a musician. But not the spirit of David. I want to release the anointing of your office. The anointing that has to do with your function. Please, I want you to believe what I'm praying. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. It's one thing David was anointed to step into his office. Are you anointed for what you are doing? I know you are working. You want promotion. Is there an unction you are working with? Or are you just working with certificate? At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. There will be distribution of graces. It's like an alignment. The anointing, the oil of your call, the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, whoever is functioning without an anointing, functioning without the oil, I stand upon this ground and I prophesy at the count of three, may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you. Get ready now. One, one, two, two, three. Receive that grace now. Take it. Take it. Grace. Grace for your academics. Grace for the ministry. Grace. The chains are gone. God help me now. I Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please. I'm seeing something happening here right now. There are people who are receiving grace for speed. And they will start running physically. Hold them. Hold them so they don't injure people. I release the grace. You won't control yourself. Physically. Running. Speed. Physically. I release that grace now. Receive grace for speed. Receive grace for speed. Right now, right now, I command you to run, run in the spirit, catch up, catch up, catch up by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I release speed, I release speed, I release speed, speed to your life, speed to your destiny, speed to your life, speed to your destiny. Your life, speak to your destiny. The words you speak, the things around your arms. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. You took away the chain. Help me, God. Help me, 
much mercy, much more than I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen, please. Three things. Let me just give three instructions. Hold on, please, everyone. The worship team will continue right now. Now, we are going to be very fast about this, number one. Number two, please, if you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones, please, I permit you, put on your phone and call them. Tell them to send it as a text message. Write it. We are going to be praying here tonight. And we are going to be asking the fire of God to fall on request. Don't assume if you have not written it. No problem. Settle down. Think well and write. You are here. You are trusting God for healing. I understand there are a few sick people that they brought around. Please, we are going to do it this way. If your case is very sensitive, then you can bring them to the front here. But those outside, please just walk to the... Um, well, there are a lot more people outside, really. Well, for those who can come in, let's see. But for those who may not make it, you can walk to the front. And then down there, I'm here. Pastor Jakes is here. Um, we'll just station ourselves one-one. And then the other people will just support. So that we can do it very fast. Praise God. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. And Jimmy is here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hold on. So outside, you can just... Walk at your various projector stands and stand there. For those who have come in, just allow them. Don't stop them. Let them come in. That does not mean everybody will stream in. Please. Are we together? If you're standing, just stand. Trust God. If they don't ask you what is wrong with you, don't worry. They just lay hands on you. Praise the Lord. Ejimi, please you help us. Ejimi will be outside here and Pastor Jakes will be down outside there. Praise the Lord. Benga. You go with Pastor Jakes. You will help Pastor Jakes outside. Um, Pastor Alpha, you'll be outside. Just help them. And then, um, who? who is around again? Is Femi around? Okay, so you can just come and help me here. So let's do it that way. Very fast. Very, very fast. If there are more people, there are still promises here. Michael is here. So maybe you can add one. Okay, promise. Just follow promise follow pastor jakes michael follow Ejimi. please let's do it very very fast while hold on please don't be distracted don't cut the flow we are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray and then i'll speak over your life many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated don't be distracted i expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit hallelujah for those stationed at different points whether at the back any of the overflows I'd like you to believe God for a miracle right now. Believe God for a miracle. You can see someone like our daddy. He has come with his crutch. Believing God to walk. You believe you walk, sir. You believe the Lord will heal you. So get ready to walk. You see, there are people stationed around. We are going to pray. This will be very, very fast. And then the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Let me start with our daddy first. How long have you been like this, sir? Six months. Stroke? Who brought him? Who came with our daddy? You came by yourself, sir? Came by myself. By yourself? From where, sir? Hospital station here. Yeah. You cannot walk? I can move with this walking stick. Which but of the legs has a problem? This is the leg. This is stroke? Yes. Can you lift it? No, I can't. I can't. The hand, I can't lift Hold it. on. Look at this. Sir, look at me. You believe in Jesus? I believe. You believe in the power of I Jesus? Believe. Lord, I introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? The Lord will begin to touch you. Your hands, everything is already dead. Sir, lift your leg. Lift your leg. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your leg. Lift it. Lift your leg. Lift your leg. Start, try to walk gently. Come. Come, try to walk gently. Come. Give me the stick. Look at me. Look at your stick. Come. 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 Don't be afraid. Come. Lift your leg. Look at this. Look at what is happening to this man. Came with this stick. Look at this. Look 
Find a chair and just keep him, let him sit down while the power of God touches him. Sam, you came here by yourself. Um, trust him. Okay, and the boy has gone. Okay, he's somewhere. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God you believe has begun this miracle. You will perfect it. Look for a stick for him there. Hold your stick by yourself and go. Don't put it on the ground. Hold it up. Walk by yourself and go. Give Jesus praise. Look at what God is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is still sick here. Someone is still sick here. I'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out from me. Someone is still sick here. No, 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 no. I'll pray for you. But I'm saying, I feel it within this vicinity from ministers go down, choir. Someone is sick. Come, let me pray for you. you came out. Lift your hands. Jesus. Someone is sick here. Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected, it's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother, supernatural miracle is coming to that person by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are holding her, but something is leaving her to you now you who is holding her something is leaving her to you there is there is virtue i see a transference of grace from a jimmy's wife to you you are doing your work as an usher but you have received something very strange and very powerful you see let me tell you something if if you do not you see hold on walking in the anointing is more than having it having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing if not you will be anointed but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing it's like a man shooting anyhow you must have discernment many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who have been touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see 
insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and matter two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing it's a strange God, God is giving two of them strange favor, strange favor. I see strange favor, strange favor. America, God is giving you access. I'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head. And God is saying he's giving you strange access, strange access, strange access, strange access, strange access. Muas, God is giving strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying, but this is a word for someone. And the Lord is saying, why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? Why make it next year? when i have destined it to be this year this is the word of the lord why make it next year this is a word for many people when i've destined it to be this year as i speak to you the word is for you the power of god will locate you why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year it's the year of triumph it's the year of triumph why make it next year just allow me to do my stupidity why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? My God. Hallelujah. There is a lady here. You have been disappointed with God right now. You actually came to help the ushers. You came expecting that I would directly call your case and you, 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 you pray this thing but now it looks like we're about to pray and I didn't call your case the power of God is coming on you now now as a sign that God had now wherever you are he's locating you now now command that spirit to leave you i see you in the spirit go now in the name of the lord jesus christ i stretch my hands now and i command by the power of the holy ghost let her go now peace to your spirit every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you right now in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still praying outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a, listen, there are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations, God, see, let me tell you, right now, if the anointing comes on you, just know that is the answer to your prayer. This is not a special once the anointing comes on you. Just know that your prayer has been answered. You understand? This is what it doesn't mean if the anoint if you don't fall down, it's not answered. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this is how God is choosing to confirm to some people now, as I'm talking, that your prayer, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how difficult your prayer is. Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What you mean? Please. Okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. 
and pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Shakato pakata. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, Liva, pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to Toketa. Rakata Kata Makata. So poto so pekete. Miracles, oh God. Testimonies, oh God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. Visit impossible situations. I tell you, God is moving. I see a cloud. I see a cloud over this prayer request. That's what I see in the spirit. God is moving upon it. Moving upon it. Moving upon it. The spirit of God is moving over the prayer request. Visiting families. Releasing angels. Releasing angels. Visiting the request. I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence. Visiting the prayer request. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the universe, the God that answers by fire. We receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, are you not ministry spirits? Send forth to minister to the heirs of salvation. We receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven. Now in the name of Jesus. The heavens over these requests are open. And answers come speedily in the name of Jesus. It has been decreed. It has been ratified. And it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we imagine, is done in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we have decreed. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus mighty praise. Hallelujah. Please say to me, still come. Pastor Jake's come. I just feel like doing this is, I, I don't always do this, but I want to prophesy over your lives. And in the name of Jesus, they are my friends. But the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives. They are great men of God in power. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension. To prophesy a new level. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it. Step into a new dimension. A Jimmy, God is saying I should release grace for access. I command that grace. Strange access. Strange access. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Strange access. Gifted men coming into your life. Connections with gifted men. In the name of Jesus, 
and pastor jakes god is giving you influence strange influence strange influence strange influence strange influence is a very strange apostolic dimension of influence lord i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless them wherever your wives are i bring them into this experience now 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 wherever they are i prophesy to tosin wherever she is and i speak to hope you are one so i prophesy as it happens to you i bring your wives into this experience in the name of jesus strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once i spotted lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the lord is saying i should prophesy a release i told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the lord is saying i should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka toto barekete zat kaskapas katapas katapas legete to soto prateke skopari adabalaraba a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter and as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter in the name of jesus a new chapter listen i prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah please lift your hands we're rounding up who is this girl come you god has chosen to visit you come come and stand here god is wiping your tears this prayer i'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny i lay my hands upon you and i command the gates to be open now i stood there and i saw you and the lord said i should open that gate i lay my hands upon you i command the gates to be open be open right now be open right now in the name of jesus christ be open right now we're rounding up we're rounding up please this lady with uh, yellow blue you come I don't know you but the Lord is asking me to pray for you lift your hands this is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I command I, I, I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open and I saw a name come out. Listen. I saw a name come out and I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting your people. All three of you. Step into that grace. I open that door now.
the Okalo family step into that grace. Open, 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 open. I open that door an age long witchcraft broken over your family. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down. Whatever has covered your glory, I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be open, open, open. I unveil your glory. I unveil your glory. I unveil your glory. Shaka ta ta ta. I unveil your glory. I unveil your glory. Tonight is a strange night. Please receive every prophetic word that I'm going to pray for you. Ah, just allow me to do one more thing. The Spirit of God, I have not seen this in a while. I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria and I see Benway State. The Spirit of God is going to Benway right now. Right now, touching people. You know how it happens when I speak. Benway, Benway, miracles. Locate them now, oh God. People from Benway, Benway, strange grace, strange grace. I break witchcraft, Benway. I'm seeing Benway. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm seeing, I know O to go, but I'm seeing the O, A. A at the, is there a place like that? Or to bar or something. The power of God, I'm seeing that. Going to that area. The Lord is bringing a miracle. Ends with an A. Whoever comes from that region. In the name of Jesus. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Benway. 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 I don't know why God is doing this. But I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo. 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 Where are they, oh God? Emo. 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now. Strangely. Matato Sotota. Emo state. Miracles. Miracles, breakthroughs, signs, wonders, miracles, miracles to evil states by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar, Something is happening right now. Cross river. Cross river. Cross river. Cross river. Help her. Help her, please. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone. It's the ministry of signs and wonders. Let me talk to you, my dear, this lady looking at me. You, come. The Lord has located you today. Come. Lift your hands. The Lord says I should tell you for shame, he's bringing laughter to your life. 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 Lift your hands. We're rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening, you don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations. I want to pray for you. Please receive everything I pray for you. Every age-long challenge 
every challenge that has refused to leave I prophesy upon it right now. I command that it comes to an end in your life now. 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 That fair lady, come. This lady, time. Run, come. Lift your hands. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Whatever has brought shame and dishonor like a stigma to your life, I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. I saw you inside a cave and I'm surprised because we've paid for, for deliverance prayer and I saw you inside a cave you are just trying to push the door that's why I asked you to come out Let me, I don't know you, do I know you? where did you come from? Damagadi. where? Damagadi. Kutuku. where is that? I don't know. here in Zaria yes. I'm going to pray for you God is bringing a major breakthrough two things God is going to throw somebody out of your life Amen. I'm not a prophet Amen. of group but it will happen Amen. he will reach three days Huh? throw Amen. completely so that you can move forward Amen. I hold your hands in the name of Jesus every deceiver of your destiny will drive them far from you right now in the name of Jesus Christ you need to love Jesus with all your heart right you are a nice person but your relationship with Jesus you can, you can get teachings after this but I want to prophesy on your life God is taking somebody not death oh just driving somebody out an unwanted person out of your life i prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen i lay my hands on you and i provoke the heavens to release that favor for you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare over every family represented here whether your nuclear family your extended family hold on i don't know what has gone wrong but in the name of jesus within now and miracle service match dramatic turnaround for families dramatic turnaround for families dramatic turnaround for families in the name of jesus one of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers i want to pray for you i don't know where they are but one thing I know is they never come on their own. They are called by prophecy. I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. The helper of your destiny. I command them to appear now. 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 Hallelujah. Come. Come and hold my hands. Congratulations. I'm seeing a job. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a very good job. And the Lord is saying I should congratulate you. Look at me. You will stand here and testify before the people of God. All the Holy Ghost said I should tell you is congratulations. And I hold your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it come to pass. I decree and declare the results you have not had in 10 years put together in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God in one month 30 days I stand here under the unction of the Holy Ghost 30 days beginning from today step into those results step into those results step into those results Step into those results. Strange dimensions of results. Hallelujah. Whoever has despised you, whether to your knowing or not to your knowing, I pray, may God put them on the scene as he lifts you. May they watch your rising as God honors you. 
I pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down. Prayer life down. Your praise and worship life down. Fasting down. Word life down. In the name of Jesus Christ, I activate fresh grace. Receive it fresh grace. Fresh fire. Outside, receive it fresh grace. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Hallelujah. Wherever your prosperity is, I pray. May, listen, listen. Hagar carried Ishmael and they were roaming around the desert. They said there was no water. But when an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw water. That you have not seen it does not mean it's, there, it's not there. I open your eyes to see where God has anointed to bring you financial blessings. I open your eyes in the name of Jesus. I open your eyes to see where God has placed your prosperity. Hallelujah. The plague of death that is looming around this nation, looking for people and families, is, listen, it's like a graph. It rises, then sometimes it relaxes. I'm praying. Whoever calls your name, I'm prophesying this, oh, whether in the secret or the open, to invoke death upon your life, I command the earth to open and swallow them. I command the earth to open and swallow them. Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. The Esther anointing, the unction and the grace that granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus, Shababa, Sata, Lakata. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now. Take it. I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection. Listen, I want to pray something that is very powerful in your life. Listen, when you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you, it's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says, defend you in the day of trouble. There are many of us, if for any reason things go wrong in your life, you are in trouble. There is nobody that can arise as a defense. But I'm prophesying to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors, I call them forth right now. In the name of Jesus may God raise men to be a wall of defense for you in this wicked um, wicked state that we are living right now in this country people say if you don't have anybody and honestly speaking somebody can get up and come and seize your land you and your land and your paper they will collect it because there is no defense I'm prophesying again quarter to shame may God raise a defense for you And finally, I want to pray the prayer of Jabez for you. Many of us, many of us have not studied. Honor is not money. Listen, listen. There are many rich people with no honor. Are we together? There are many well-to-do people with no honor. Do you know what honor is? Honor is when God anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation. So for every one person who talks nonsense, there are thousands. Honor. Jabez said, oh, the, the mother bore him in sorrow. You brought shame for me. So I call you Jabez. Honor is more than money, brothers and sisters. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. I pray.
the mantle of honor that by the grace of God has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all names. For as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive, take that mantle right now. Take that mantle right now. They don't have to know you, but strangers will come to feed your flock. Receive that grace for honor. Hallelujah. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. We lift our hands to the great I am. What can we And we lift our hands to the great I am. We lift our hands. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos kate branda kata bako tos koto preka te kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.